So we are, we are so lucky first uh, that we have a mayor who's actually logged over 2,000 miles a year. He wa over, that's over 2,000 miles a year that you walk in Ojai. I mean, that is really, that's a, just think of all the car trips he saved. Every time the mayor walks, there's a car parking spot for someone else, okay? And we also have in the audience uh, my sidekick, Sunny Bauer, who has logged over 2,000 miles on her electric bike. And she's going to come up and give a little testimonial about her epic um, adventures. She rides from downtown Ojai to Matillaha Canyon, from one end of the valley to the other on her electric bike. So um, unlike the mayor, I, I'm going to read from my, who wings it, I have some notes because I looked at my, um, my speech last year and I, I thought it was a little bit discombobulated, so we'll see how it goes this year. Okay. <clears throat> so as Ray mentioned, um, I was born in Holland, so I know what a truly bike-friendly town looks like, and um, there's no reason why a, what, we're considered one of the most beautiful valleys in the world, and there is no logical reason why we should have traffic problems, parking problems, when many people are making trips, um, car trips that are under three miles. We should be a model city where all children can safely ride their bikes to school, where parents are no longer chauffeuring their kids to the library, to after school sports. We have, we have the basic infrastructure for that already. The reason we have that is because about 50 years ago, the city council had the wisdom not to put a four-lane highway through the downtown core. If we had done that, we would be sprawl, like many cities have become. Instead, we're a small town, and if we make some basic changes, and that's what uh, we're aspiring to do, then our city could be as well-known as Amsterdam, as Davis, as a model, pedal-powered, walkable community. We're really, we're, we're very close to that if we just implement a few basic changes, and that's what I'm going to discuss. Okay, good, I already did the first panel off my head, okay. Um, okay, all right, so, so um, for some, some of you who are not familiar with the concept of complete streets, the city of Ojai has what's known we have a bicycle pedestrian master plan that was actually adopted in 1998 and then later on we uh, that that metamorphosed into something called the complete streets plan and what is a complete street a complete street is a street that's actually safe for all users of the road including little children on bicycles okay those of us who are, are experience you know adults can negotiate most adults that have been riding their bike their whole life can negotiate our city streets. But the fact that every, every single morning, hundreds of cars are in front of Nordoff, Matillaha, all of that is un, it's, it's completely unnecessary if we just had a paradigm shift in our thinking. And if, we truly, if we're truly serious about becoming a model, sustainable, green city, then we would implement the infrastructure so that all the children could safely ride. And I asked Kelly Pasco, um, who was supposed to be uh, speaking with me this morning, what he considers are, the, mo are the, the, the main detriments to making Ojai truly bicycle, pedestrian friendly. And what you have to understand is that even if you have eight blocks that are safe, if it's the glitches in the system that keep people from riding their bikes. And one of the main glitches, there's two, there's actually, th th there's three or four main glitches. Number one is Grand Avenue. We absolutely need bicycle, um, dedicated bike lanes on Grand Avenue, okay? If the residents are not willing to put the, the safety of our young people over the priority and convenience of parking, then they really have to only be driving 20 miles per hour. But there's no reason why we cannot restripe. It, we, we've, the plan is there. We just need the political will to get those bike lanes on Grand Avenue. 
The second and big impediment is the arbolata. The arbolata should absolutely be 15 miles per hour, and I don't understand why the residents there don't demand it, because it's a narrow street, and many of the people that live in the arbolata have told me that walking, it should be a walkable neighborhood. Now they look over their shoulder, and they feel like they're on the freeway, they're gonna get hit. Okay, that's completely unacceptable. And it's for the fact that people accept this shows how conditioned we are that we put cars first, okay? So you need a paradigm shift where the safety of pedestrians, the safety of cyclists takes priority over the convenience of cars. If the Arbolata was 15 miles per hour, then people would stop rat running through there with their trucks. They would go on the highway where they belong. Okay, so that's the, that's the second impediment. The third impediment is the four-lane highway in front of Nordoff. And the good, if you haven't heard the good news, the city recently approved a design to reduce those four lanes to two lanes. Okay, that's going to do a lot to make the town safe. Okay, that's a dinosaur re a relic from, from old thinking. And the people who actually came up with that idea was Caltrans. About 10 years ago, Kelly Pasco and I rode all over the valley with, with um, representatives from Caltrans. And when we, when, we, when we were in front of Nordoff and they were observing all the p parents waiting to pick up their kids, they looked at us and they said, you know, you could, you could turn this into a two-lane road just like the rest of the valley. So we are at the point of, we've, I think we've done the f almost the final, uh, we've done the pr all the preliminary approval, we have the grant, so that's going to happen. Okay, there are other areas around, there are other impediments, but those are the three main ones. The Arbolata, Grand Avenue, the highway. Then uh, there's the bridge toward the east end. If you wanna go to Seoul Park, you know how the bike trail abruptly ends. That's another main, major impediment that needs to be addressed as soon as possible, because it's not safe. To, I've done it, but you take your life in your hands. I always walk across the bridge, and the people in the East End would really like that. The other, uh, the other project that we're working on with the county is Creek Road. Creek Road used to be a scenic, bike, horse, walk, friendly road. Now it's become, uh, you know, like a, uh, what do you, what's the word? It's the people speed through Creek Road, so that, that's in the works. If we can address those issues, then we'll, and, and make, the, the other thing I want to do is do, I wanted to do a 20, a 20 is plenty on all residential streets, 20 or 25 miles per hour. The town, our town is filled with signs that are outdated. If you go up Foothill, it'll say 35, Fairview Road, 35, 40 miles. All of that is outdated thinking. Whoever dreamed that up did not envision a future with, you know, with the, the tr when those signs were posted, we had much less traffic. We didn't have SUVs roaring up and down the street, you know, with the level of traffic that we have now. Okay, so um, let's see, if there's time, I, I'm, I'm going to bring Sunny up for her t testimony. I don't, I don't see Kelly, so I don't think he's going to make it, but Sunny... Um, do you want to show your bike too? You want to walk your bike? Her, there's her bike over by the tree. I also, I'll, I'll give my own little electric bike a anecdote. Uh, you know, I'm an old lady now, I'm almost 70, and a couple of years ago I fell, okay? And I hurt my feet so bad, I, I, I didn't get on my bike, I could hardly walk, and I began to realize that I, I needed to do something. You know, it was, I wasn't getting better. So I got an electric bike to make it possible for me to ride up hills again. That's my boring testimonial from an old lady. <laughs> okay, now Sunny. Okay. Sunny Bauer. Mm -hmm. And I'll add to that testimonial. Thank you, Susa. And thank you for everything you do for Ojai. You're welcome. You're a good, <laughs> good lady. So. David, did you want to say something? The question is a question from uh, David Moody is um, that he, he did you just hear that for the first time? <laughs> okay, he wants he asked what's uh, the highway in front of Nordhoff is going to be reduced to two lanes of traffic just like the rest of the valley, 
In fact, Oakview is, is headed in that direction as well. Um, the other two lanes are going to be dedicated bike lanes, and they might uh, do, there's going to be more landscaping. And um, it's important to recognize that the fire department, the police department, the emergency services at um, um, the hospital, the, all the people that were concerned how that might impact our, you know, the, if there's an emergency, uh, have now, and the school board, everybody signed off on it because the bike, for, in an emergency situation, um, the fire trucks can park in the bike lanes. And uh, so all those issues have been addressed. But yes, th to clarify, the two, the, the, the two lanes are going to become dedicated bike lanes. And there may be some additional parking in some spots, I'm not, I'm not sure. But that's the main, uh, the main change is that instead of, and, and, and it'll, it, it, it's going to change how people cross the highway because now when people cross, and I, I've observed, I've sat in front of Nordoff um, at all hours as, ha as have other members of the Complete Street uh, um, Committee, and we've noticed that kids are so scared I only saw two or three kids try to cross at Church Road because you've actually got to look, there's traffic coming four directions because there's people making left turns, right turns. So that will reduce, does that make sense? You know, it'll make it easier for people not to feel like they're taking their life in their hands when they run across those four lanes. Thank you for your question. Okay, now back to Sunny. I told Sunny, think of this as stand-up comedy, so she would relax. And I told her, no problem, <laughs> we'll probably go there. Um, maybe unintentionally. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> and thank you again, Susa, because you, when you see a good idea, and you think it's good for a person, and it's good for uh, the environment, and it's good for Ojai, you are relentless. And I know that for a fact, so I've, I've experienced it personally. Sousa had bought her e-bike and encouraged me to go into the mob shop right down here, downtown Ojai, and talk to Kelly. I took my husband in, who's an avid bike rider. Uh, they outfitted me with a bike that was safe for a woman my age and ability level. I was sort of a beginner again. The minute I got on my bike, I knew it was magic. And I headed for Foothill Road. I wanted to give, put it to the test. My husband behind me in the family minivan, <laughs> charging up the hill. I think he was in shock a little bit by my strength and power. It was incredible. So we rode over the hill into Motown and had a wonderful lunch at Farmer. And after that day, and this was probably last June, um, I have used my bike as my primary form of transportation all over the Ojai Valley. I find it extremely bikeable. I'm not intimidated by traffic and, and streets. But if you are, we have an incredible bike path from Ventura to Ojai, uh, all the way to the end of Bryant Street, with many off paths that we can get to every brew pub, every restaurant, every, play, every store in downtown Ojai. You, and you have front seat parking. I mean, front door parking everywhere you go. You can't beat that. I don't understand why, th why the bike paths aren't crowded and why I'm out there by myself so much. <laughs> so, uh, so. Oh well, I go to Matillaha Canyon. I have ridden Matillaha Canyon by moonlight, solo at 11 o'clock at night. So I'm a little bit crazy, and I know most people aren't going to go there, and uh, uh, we certainly don't need to. But. I just want to explain that it's, a, it's a so doable and it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. I dropped 15 pounds. It certainly wasn't a goal, but it was a bonus. And so if you need some, something to spark you a little bit, get on a bike, go see Kelly at the mob shop. Or Bicycles of Ojai. Bicycles of Ojai is wonderful too. Uh, and get out there and have a good time. And don't forget to wear your helmet. Be safe, friends. Thank you. We're having a program for the whole, May is National Bike, bike Month, and we're, we're uh, rolling out Ojai Ride and Roll, and we're going to have critical mass down Ojai Avenue. That means that hopefully we'll have, you know, dozens and maybe even a, over 100 cyclists, and other cities have done this. And we're going, I'm going to lead a bike train again to Topa Topa School, 
and uh, other schools are also on board. So you'll be hearing about this. And we have a booth over by the fountain next to the Ohio Valley Green Coalition booth if you want to learn more. Thank you. <laughs>